Phoenix, 1931. It was really that small, relatively ignored, anonymous desert city that hardly anybody paid attention to until the Trunk murders. And then, not just the rest of the United States, but the rest of the world being very attentive to what happened with Winnie Ruth Judd. And Jim Dobkins, you wrote this. Now, you were with the Republic for how long? I uh, worked for the Republic from 1961 to 1966. I was a sports writer and columnist. Yes, yeah, so did their attorneys insist that you share the profits of the book with them? No, the, there was conditions attached. We knew that ahead of time. The book was written entirely in secret and nobody knew about it in Phoenix until it hit the book, bookshelves. But there had been a, a condition attached to her release and that was that neither Winnie Ruth Judd nor anyone she is associated with should write her story for profit in any form. So we kept a low profile because we didn't want to be accused of being responsible for her not being released from prison. Do the Reader's Digest condensation. This is the real brief version of what happened in 1931 and who Winnie Ruth Judd was. Uh, Winnie Ruth Judd was a uh, uh, lady who was married to a doctor, Dr. Judd. He was way in Southern California practicing medicine while at a license at the time. But she was, uh, had two girlfriends, Hedvig Samuelson and Agnes Annie Leroy. And on or about the night of uh, October 15th, 16th, somewhere before or after midnight that night, she was alleged to have murdered both of the two girls. And uh, she was believed by some people to have dismembered one of the bodies. Uh, she was a fugitive for over a week in Southern California. The trunks she had originally put either her or uh, possibly an accomplice, which a lot of people believe, and uh, which I happen to believe was actually true, in a large trunk, but it was too heavy to be shipped on the train station. The next day, she had it picked up and it was in two trunks and a hat box. And uh, basically, the one body was dismembered because it was too heavy to go as one trunk. And she was a fugitive in Los Angeles and finally surrendered in a funeral parlor in Los Angeles. And everybody around the world, it was a planet-wide story, I suppose because of the grisly nature of the murder. But here you are, you're a newspaper guy, and you continue after all these years since 1931 to use words like alleged or it was believed to be. Did Winnie Ruth Judd do it or not? She never denied killing the two girls but she told so many different stories over the years that I, I think when she got up into the area of early 90s when she died, I don't believe she really had a command on really what happened. But uh, for one, I believe that uh, Jack Halloran, who was a sugar daddy for both of the murdered girls and of Winnie, uh, I believe that he was involved. Uh, we couldn't mention any of that at the time the book came out, the original book in 1973. And who was Halloran? Halloran was a wealthy Phoenix businessman. Oh. We had to call him uh, Carl Harris in our original book because he was still alive and he was never officially charged with anything. And you did use the words sugar and daddy. Uh, that, it was part of the reason for the attraction. There was sex, there was the triangle, there was the possibility of um, at least in those days, unusual same-gender relationships. Uh, all of those things, part of the Winnie Ruth Judge story, which you have since updated. Yeah, we've added some materials to the back, and uh, one of the main things we added was, was another murder case that Halloran was investigated for that until today has never been made public. Was he the only major celebrated Arizonan that was tied to this? Uh, 
and celebrated. Uh, well, well-known uh, yeah. local citizenry. Uh, for example, for years I heard that uh, former Mayor Jack Williams. Well, Jack Williams was associated with it from the start. He was a baggage man who was on duty the, the time that the trunks were shipped. And then later, years on KOY, well, KOY radio station, he worked part-time as a baggage man at the railroad station. And he would write a, every evening, he would write a script based on the day's courtroom activity. And that night, around midnight, it would be broadcast across the United States with local acting talent reenacting what happened out the previous day in the and courtroom. And what was his continuing association with KOY later on? Yeah, well, Jack Williams later, when he was governor, he was the one that had to make the decision whether to allow her to be released from prison or not. But he also bought the station. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, where he was the baggage guy, yeah. he wound up owning the radio station, where I also happened to be employed for some considerable yeah. amount of time. And there was this unusual suitcase. Oh, well, that's another story. <laughs> Winnie Rouge of the Trunk Murderers. This is the classic edition. Yes. This is updated, available only where? At the Poison Pen Bookstore in Scottsdale or they could order it direct from me through uh, the website marginbooks.com. Boy, I tell you, it's still an ongoing mystery. Uh, and probably if there's another edition, he'll write it. We're talking about J. Dwight Jim Dobkins, who also wrote this with Robert Hendricks. And Jim appeared here to tell you about it on a Monday on the Morning Scrap.